Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. This panel is about FTC safeguards and you, a readiness check. And I would like to introduce our distinguished panel. They are Brad Holton, who's the CEO and founder of Proton Dealership IT. Ed Roberts, the COO of Bozard Ford Lincoln. Nikhil Kalani, who's the Vice President and Chief Information Security Officer at the Reynolds & Reynolds Company. And Todd Skelton, who is the CEO at Ascendance Trucks. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. This is a very timely conversation. And uh, Nikhil, I will come to you because before we jump into the questions for the panel, I think for our audience and for some perspective, if you would please maybe help define what safeguards means in terms of our conversation today. Sure. Uh, the FTC safeguards rule is a rule that was updated by the FTC last year, December of last year, going into full effect this year on December 9th. And uh, the essence of this rule is to protect consumer information. That's the whole point of the rule. So the FTC, more so than ever before, has been prescriptive with what they want financial institutions to do. And in this particular iteration of the rule, dealers are explicitly called out as financial institutions. So it applies to car dealers. Uh, they've described a program that must be followed. It has several key elements, but the big pictures of it are, you start with uh, designating, designating a qualified individual, somebody in your dealership who will help administer this program and report on the program's success to senior people at the dealership. Uh, for example, a board of directors or other senior officers. Uh, the program must contain several different elements to it. Some of them are inside the dealership, such as training your people. Some of them are about your vendors, making sure that your vendors have equivalent security uh, programs as well. Uh, and also your technology, right? Ensuring that the data is well protected, identifying the data, making sure that wherever it is, has the correct technical and administrative safeguards around it. There's several elements into it. I won't go through all of them here, but it's a pretty detailed regulation. Uh, still, with all that detail, we shouldn't lose sight of the key point. It's about securing consumer information. So take care of security. There's some paperwork, some steps to be done. Uh, don't get too lost in the paperwork. Keep your eye on the prize, which is consumer data. And that's how we get through this rule. Nikhil, you highlighted some of those critical aspects uh, and requirements of safeguard. Um, just again, run through those one more time for us so that our dealers are aware of the most critical requirements that need to be focused on between now and uh, early December. So the most important is having a strong security program, right? IT is the foundation. On that, you can layer on real technical security. Uh, if that's done well, the rest of this becomes a whole lot easier because that takes care of the key point of the entire regulation. But in terms of the paperwork aspects beyond the technology, uh, the whole program must be risk-based. So there's a risk assessment that the dealer must conduct. Based on the findings from the risk assessment, they've got to make decisions about their program. Where are they weak? Where do they need to invest additionally? Uh, so that's a key piece. They must have a written information security policy. Uh, you know, a lot of people are still protecting dealers in a, let's say, as an informal manner. But uh, in this regulation, you're required to take that to a formal way. The program must be written out. Should you have an incident, you must have an incident response plan written out, planned out ahead of time, key names of people there as to whose role is what, how will you respond. Uh, you can't leave it to, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out during an incident. Uh, in addition, uh, the other key piece is about employee training. Now, everybody in the dealership must understand that uh, if they're touching consumer data, they are a target. They can be attacked by phishing campaigns, for example. Teaching the staff to build, to build a security aware culture is very important. Uh, and on the, on the data side itself, you know, knowing where your data is, you know, knowing your assets, knowing, knowing your products that you're working with and ensuring those areas are technically secure. That's the big picture of this regulation. All of this must be wrapped up in reporting at least annually to your seniors. There are a lot of proactive requirements. Uh, Brad Holton, you work with dealers all across the nation. 
and you see what's happening out there, and you probably saw it a lot earlier than most, uh, that deadline is quickly approaching. What are you hearing about dealerships and their readiness uh, for this? Uh, we're hearing a lot of dealers call us saying, what is this FTC thing? Um, that's what we're hearing, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we're doing you know, events, and, and people come up constantly and say, okay, so I, I read about this. I, I know it's something I got to do, but I'm not real sure exactly where to start. So where does it begin? And, you know, we kind of sit down with them and say, OK, let's let's figure out where are you right now? You know, because there's, there's as Nikhil was saying, there's certain levels of getting compliant. And you've really got to start with a foundation of solid IT. Right. If you've got infrastructure that is is solid, that, you know, is running the basic system, you've got a firewall that's got reporting and content filtering and malware protection. You've, you've got endpoint detection on all your PCs. You've got, you know, some some monitoring going on 24 seven of, of all your equipment. Well, you've already done a lot of the stuff that is kind of the foundation to get there. Now, if you haven't done any of this, if you're running, you know, a, a 10 dealer group like a buy here, pay here. Well, then, yeah, you've got a pretty big uh, lift, you know, to get where you need to be to be compliant. So it really comes down to, you know, if you've been practicing proper cybersecurity and this has been just overall, you've been aware of ransomware and, you know, breaches and all of those sort of things. And, and you're, you're going to 20 groups and you're hearing about all that stuff and you've been doing it for two years and you're really focused on that. It's not that big of a lift to get to, you know, to be compliant. It's just formally documenting it, you know, doing some vendor assessments and kind of buttoning it up in a nice, you know, annual report. It's, it's really not that far to go. But like I said, if you're running it like a buy here, pay here, and, you know, you've got a bunch of home equipment plugged together and you've got, you know, Bob's computer down the street is the one that's handling your IT and cybersecurity or, you know, even worse, you've got the parts manager's brother uh, who happens to be on the payroll, you know, 10 hours a, a month, then you've got a pretty big ways to go to get there. Um, so we're, we're seeing it all over the place. You know, some, some people are really proactive and they, they were already secure. So they just kind of added on to it and then others or just walking in with their hands up saying, I have no idea what to do. Where do I start? Brad, we've got two great dealers, and I want to get their perspective on what they're hearing from their peers. But before I do, let me come back, Brad, to something that Nick Hill mentioned was that written uh, element, the fact that this needs to be documented, as you just said. Uh, that, is a, that is a key feature and a key requirement of uh, what's coming up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's one thing to say, okay, you, we've got all the pieces. But really what the FTC is looking for is to kind of give you a framework and an impetus to become cyber secure. And it's really what the intent of the entire thing was. Let's protect consumer data. But these things run exactly parallel. If you're, if you're preventing breaches, you're preventing ransomware, you're preventing having your dealership shut down for a week due to a ransomware event, then you're also you know, complying with probably 80 percent of the requirements of the FTC. Uh, so then it's just, you know, formalize the reporting process, uh, do your vendor assessments. Uh, you know, kind of put it up into a nice little bundle and there you go. And then, you know, every year you go back and audit and make sure that, you know, everything's working well, you, you've updated everything and, and your, your security teams are staying on top of stuff. So, um, you know, it really kind of all ties together. I'd add a little bit more to that, please, Ted. So, you know, the paperwork side of it, what that's enforcing is that you have a plan, you're managing this in a professional manner, right? So putting together that plan is, not terribly challenging if you've got good vendors to help you with it. If you're starting from scratch, it's hard. But you know, with good templates, with some guidance, it's fairly easy to put together the plan. But never losing sight of the fact that it all depends on a foundation of real technical security. Paperwork will not protect you, right? Against the hackers, right? So that against the hackers, when if, if they're playing offense, you've got to have a strong defense. That's the real sport, right? The paperwork is the rule book and the, the focus shouldn't shift to just what are the rules. And you can know the rules, but still get yourself in trouble on the sports field. You've got to have the right plays, right? And that's the real sport here is being, having the right technical defense against the hackers. Well, uh, Ed Roberts, here we are in mid-November at a fixed ops roundtable, and we're talking about uh, safeguards. You are very well respected in the fixed ops community. You came up through fixed ops. You're now the COO of one of the largest uh, dealers in the United States, probably the biggest shop on the East Coast with what you're running there. Ed, what are you hearing from your peers? Because I know they reach out to you all the time. Well, there, there's certainly a lot of noise in the industry, and and quite frankly, this may not be the popular answer, but I, I embrace it and I'm looking forward to this coming into play because what it's truly saying is we need to protect our customers' information. And not only our customers' information, we're also protecting our own information that we've been our, that we expose ourselves 
by not having good practices in place. So it really cleans us all up if we to abide by this. And and maybe the deadline gets pushed out. We're talking early uh, December right now. Um, maybe it gets pushed out, but I'm hoping that it doesn't because we need to hold a tight line on this to make sure that we all stay compliant and take care of our, our, our consumers and quit resisting the, the deal. We, we've kind of pushed it off a bit to say, okay, I'll take care of it. It's not until December. It's not until December. Well, now it's upon us. And if you're not there, you're not going to be there, but it's never too late to get started. Todd Skelton, uh, you're very well respected within the industry. Um, and you know firsthand, uh, as do we, on the importance on all this. What are you hearing uh, from your peers out there uh, on Safeguard? So, I mean, I think, Ted, what's going on is the the private groups, the smaller individual dealership groups and the individual dealers themselves are probably the ones most at risk. Uh, the big public companies have clearly got some sort of plan that they're working on and are probably just like anything else that's of this magnitude ahead of it. But, you know, I'll, I'll go with what Ed said. You know, put yourself in the consumer's shoes for a second. We don't like regulation. We know that. But this is kind of common sense, right? And, you know, we we had a huge breach uh, at Prime Automotive uh, last uh, in 2020 during COVID. Uh, and I learned an awful lot about cybersecurity. And what I would tell you, if there's one thing, whether you're a single group of a couple of stores, a single dealer, or somebody that's got it more than a few, um, it's best, in my opinion, to hire somebody else, hire a brand, you know, to, to come in and take care of it for you, an MSP, because there's very little scale that, that you can have that's going to be large enough to support a real IT department. Because I learned that what these folks want to do when you hire them is they want to build something. And quite frankly, in the auto space, we're not building anything. We're, we're maintaining, we're taking care of our customers, we're protecting our customers and our associates. And we don't need somebody who's going to come and create a plethora of different things in the IT space. We need safe and secure environments. Great points, Todd. Um, from what you are aware of, uh, Nick Hill, what do you see as the most time-consuming parts uh, that's going to involve dealerships that we may not be anticipating right now, um, you know, from your perspective? So... The, the foundation of IT and security, if that's not in place, if that's the that's the most time consuming part of all. I mean, having a significant um, change in security posture, upgrading your network, upgrading your uh, PCs if needed, that's it's not an overnight process for sure. There's some spend there, uh, money wise and time wise. If that's in place, uh, the rest of the regulation can be handled in a fairly timely manner. I'd say of the paperwork sides of it, the third party risk side is the most complex. So one has to work with your partners, with your vendors, uh, to evaluate their security. And uh, you know, so now vendors are going to be receiving questionnaires by the hundreds or the thousands, and they have to be able to respond to that. Uh, in some cases, I've seen questionnaires that are 500 questions long because people think that's the right way to evaluate somebody, that makes no sense really, because you're asking the vendor to go answer that, but you've also got to then go read that and make decisions based on that. I think having a right balance of how do you evaluate somebody's security posture is needed, uh, but vendors have to respond to those in a fairly timely manner. You might have a bunch of vendors, 50, 60, 80 vendors, uh, and evaluating all of those and making good business decisions, I think is fairly time consuming, but a critical part. If they have your data, they must be evaluated for security. Wow. Todd, I can imagine in a multi-dealer group, let alone one dealership, how many vendors, Todd, could possibly be involved with that? And that does sound like it's going to be a, a, a heavy lift for some. Yeah, and I think the key there is we're not typically built with the infrastructure to go and manage all this stuff, right? That's the most right. difficult part of it. Uh, unless you're a large public company, which again is not the majority of the folks that we're talking to today because they, they represent a very small piece of the entire you know 18,000 uh, plus dealerships. Um, you really have to, I think, be smart and figuring out who's going to help manage this process. And that's that key component that's actually a requirement, right? Is that you have somebody that's going to oversee it. And it can't just be, in my opinion, it can't just be someone who has it as a third or fourth job. Because if that happens, you're, you're going to crater, right? 
So my recommendation would be pay somebody who's competent to actually do the job and then they can manage the vendors and such. But it's a it's a big uh, it's a big uh, job to do for sure. Yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of, you know, controllers are the ones that are assigned the task. Right. And it's like, OK, you know, here you go. Here's something else for you to do. And, you know, the, it's just just a vendor piece alone. So we're building a database of, you know, almost every vendor in the automotive world and reaching out to them proactively for for our clients. And the response rate, you know, from from vendors typically is probably 10 percent, 12 percent from what we've seen so far in response to safeguards. Um, so it's you know, it, it's not it's not good. Uh, so that piece alone is is quite a bit of uh, time consuming, you know, just just keeping track of that and uh, following up on it on a regular basis. Uh, but as Nikhil said earlier, also, you know, one of the, one of the requirements is that you have security uh, information event management, which is a 24 seven monitoring system that, you know, monitors your firewall and servers and, you know, logs, looks for suspicious activity, monitor, monitors your endpoint detection or your managed detection. And if a dealer already has all the pieces that need to be monitored, well, OK, that's not that big a deal. Once again, if you don't even have a decent firewall, you don't even have you know any kind of endpoint security or managed security platform for for any of your endpoint devices, servers, tablets, anything, then you know you really you're going to have some time on your hands, and and you know it's it's going to be a rush to get anything in, in place in this short period of time. Uh, it's almost like trying to buy a circuit board or a car, you know, right now. <laughs> and a more go, go ahead, Nick. Nick go. Uh, I'll add on to something that Todd said here, which is about now, doing this internally versus bringing an outsourcing partner to solve this problem. In my opinion, for almost any business, trying to tackle security solely internally is a losing proposition. Okay, sure. Because first, finding the people that you need, uh, you know, the salaries are not cheap in this particular industry. Uh, knowledge is not that common. So you've got to have really good people. Having enough of them to manage this 24-7 and then having enough visibility, you know, in order to train a person of this caliber, you've got to have, you've got to show them a variety of different kinds of attacks. You've got to have exposure to the big industry, right? Variety of attacks, volume of attacks, that develops the skills and the reflex actions needed to take the fight back to the attackers, right? If you're, if you're managing a single business internally, you simply won't have a variety and volume to have the skills necessary to react when the time comes. So, so the people who are doing this all day, 24 hours a day, that kind of thing, it's an outsourced partner can bring that to the table. I just don't see most businesses being able to sustain that level of knowledge internally. Yeah. Brad, uh, to Todd's point earlier, um, you do this at, uh, at Proton Dealership IT. This is what you do. You are in this space, uh, and I know you work and have helped a lot of dealerships, and I believe you work with Todd as well. Uh, Brad, kind of take us through it uh, from your perspective, um, you know, how you would help dealerships, what you undertake, and what does that process look like? Sure. So, I mean, first thing we're going to do is look at kind of analysis of where they are. We're going to sit down and have a conversation and say, okay, show us show us what we got. You know, let's start with just a hardware, you know, hardware layer. Let's work through that. Let's look at your business processes. You know, do you have any kind of security awareness training in place for your employees right now? Uh, do you have any, you know, uh, actual security plans written out? Do you have any uh, response plans written out? You just, you know, start from scratch. And then we just go through a step at a time. And, you know, as Nikhil has, has uh, mentioned before, you know, getting the IT infrastructure in place is absolutely the core of having any kind of compliance or cybersecurity program. If we don't have the basic infrastructure that we can work with, then, you know, we're, we're not going to accomplish anything. So we've got to make sure we got the hardware right. We've got to have a, a good solid enterprise firewall that we can use to, to filter out things and stop malware. We've got to have good email filtering. Uh, we've got to have endpoint protection. So if something does get through, you know, we're, we're not going anywhere with it. Uh, we've got to have good backup systems in place, lots of backups. We've got to have, you know, some of the requirements are encrypting data and multi-factor authentication for access to data. Well, if we don't have the systems that can do that, then, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty much just out of luck. We can't encrypt and we can't turn on multi-factor. So, you know, working through each piece of that, kind of going through, you know, the hardware and, and the processes and then uh, working through, so, you know, getting up to those higher level of, of being able to report on things and uh, doing the assessments and uh, vulnerability scans, penetration testing, things like that, uh, kind of, you know, towards towards the end there to see how, where we are and kind of benchmark things. Uh, so it's, it's a very complicated process that, um, you know, takes a good bit of time. 
Uh, and, you know, you should be doing it even, even if the FTC never came out, you know, with, with the new safeguards, it's still something everybody should go to just because, you know, as, as Todd experienced, you don't want to be sitting there going, all right, nothing works. I can't, you know, do ROs. I can't sell a car. Uh, you know, we can't close any deals. We can't order parts, warranty. Uh, I mean, we can't do trades. We can't do anything because the entire system is down. Uh, and, you know, oftentimes we do a ton of incident response where a dealer gets referred to us in their middle of a ransomware breach. Um, and it's you know, anywhere from days to weeks before things get back to normal. Uh, we've we've you know, got phone calls from some that were two weeks in and still we're not anywhere near close to returning to work. Um, so it, it's an extremely painful uh, process and can be an extremely um, embarrassing you know, public event as well. Um, so, so doing all of these things that, that you know, tie into the FTC, uh, it's well worth it. I mean, even if you're not, you know, obviously not happy about having another federal mandate tell you what to do, it, it is what it is, and you'll be better in the end, you know, just just by going through that exercise. Ed, the way that Nick Hill and and Brad and Todd are describing it, we're under attack, Ed, in our industry. Absolutely, we're we're targets, and and there's a lot of dealers listening to this, and they've read over the guidelines, and I think that I can handle it, and I won't touch on what Todd said hire a specialist to do it. It's what they do. This is not in our wheelhouse. The, the, the encryption that we're talking about and all those things, those aren't things that we do in the car business. So we got to look out and the convenience is worth the charge because then you can check the box that I'm in compliant. And not only can you be in compliant from a federal uh, federal standpoint, but you're in compliant with your customers and you can tell them that you protect their information and that you're there for them. It's just good insurance for all of us to have. Hire the skill set that works and that can make it happen and guide you down the right path. Ed, you've got 350 employees there at Bozard and thousands of customers, thousands of repair orders going on, you know, not to mention the sales side and the F&I side of the business. I can't imagine, uh, you know, ignoring this and putting it off to the side. We've got to address it right now, Ed. So as you said, I had over 300 employees. I have three businesses. So I have another daycare that isn't, isn't counted in that. Um, and then we have a restaurant that I have over 5,000 people a week showing up to. The uh, so that highlights the level of security that you need because not all those people that come to the restaurant are the most are the people that you want at your store and and on through things. So your screens need to time out. Those things are imperative. The more people you have rolling through there, and we just talked about it from an employee standpoint and from a customer standpoint at the restaurant. Now you run 600 customers a day through your business. And you got that many more opportunities of being at risk. So take the time, hire the right person. Get yourself protected. You know that's that's actually a really good point. As is, is it's amazing how many dealer principals own one, two, three, twelve different other businesses, and it's pretty typical that we see them tied into the dealership management team in some way. Uh, we've got tons of dealers that the controller is also you know doing the books for a leasing company, a property management company, um, you know insurance company, you name it, all sorts of side businesses. And a lot of times the dealers don't think about the fact that not just your dealer data, because it's always said, oh, well, you know, the consumer data is in the DMS or the CRM. There's nothing on my network. You know, we're not keeping anything local. It's all just over there. But when you start looking at the side businesses and you start looking at how much data is, is coming in from random places that would normally not be in a dealership, you really you know, start to see a much bigger picture of exposure. Uh, because when you tie all those businesses together, if something happens at one of them, it can happen at all of them. Absolutely. Uh, well, you guys see the behind the scenes stuff. We see what's in front of us and we think, OK, we're protected, we're protected, but we don't know how it comes in from behind. And that's where you guys come in and, and really help us out and, and turn on the light bulbs for us. Now, one more piece of risk management in all of this is the cyber insurance policy. But without the right technical foundation and the policies and procedures and such, obtaining cyber insurance has now become extremely hard. Right? It's already more expensive than it ever was. The paperwork requirements are the biggest they've been. But without these steps, you simply won't qualify or it'll be just crazy expensive to get it. You know, it's interesting to kill. You said that and I, I was going to go to that because we're just closing on our first 10 truck dealerships and the diligence behind that with an amazing insurance broker, USI, um, the paperwork that has to be done in order to prove that you've done everything that you're supposed to do to get the cyber insurance is daunting just to say the least. So if the FTC is not getting us with this, 
you're not getting cyber insurance at a reasonable rate, if at all, if you don't have this stuff done. Yeah. So to that point, the Tokyo Marine, you know, Corvus Beasley, almost all the policies have gone from, you know, two years ago, it was a one page document. The owner dealership, do you make money sign here? Can you can you afford to pay us? All right. That was it. Now it's a seven page document that's asking you really. It's, it's kind of very, very similar when you lay it next to the FTC requirements. They almost match up on quite a few different points. You know, the insurance company wants to know if you've got, you know, 24 seven monitoring. Well, so does the FTC. Insurance wants to know if you've got encryption and backup. So does the FTC. A multi-factor authentication is required by any insurance company now. The FTC requires it as well. So when you start lining things up, security awareness training, both of them require it. Uh, it it's actually very, very parallel. And if you, if you, you know, if you're going to get insurance, which you'd be crazy not to have it, you've pretty much got to be FTC compliant anyway. So it, it really ties together and makes it, uh, you know, two for one to, to get everything done right. Nikhil, you're looking at this from a big perspective uh, from the Reynolds and Reynolds company. You've got a lot of dealerships. And as we're hearing, those dealers have a lot of businesses involved with their retailing of vehicles. Um, this is a uh, this has got to be on the forefront for our, our dealer body to be addressing and doing that right now. Absolutely. The risks are tremendous, right? Um, it is very easy to steal data if the right protections are not in place. Uh, it's not you know, there's a phrase in the industry that's used and uh, sometimes it seems overdone, but it is true. Uh, it's not if you get hacked, it's when, right? But with the protections in place, you can really reduce your risks down and take control of the situation. Without it, it's just asking for trouble. Well, um, Todd, you mentioned that we got to reach out to the professionals who, who do this day in and day out, and it's their first uh, business. Um, how important is that for dealers to do right now as part of the safeguard and uh, you know to be proactive, which is what we're hearing in all the conversations? Well, I think it's the only way you're going to get there, right? And from a cost basis, you know, it's a it's a per user charge in most cases. So smaller groups going to pay a little bit less on a uh, on a on a total basis, uh, maybe a little bit more per user. But when you try to scale this and do it yourself, like we did at Prime with uh, a $3.2 billion business. So it wasn't a small business, it was 56 dealerships. And we had nine people running this organization in, in the IT department, and it was completely out of sorts. I mean, not even close to being anywhere near compliant, hence our breach. So, you know, when you hire someone up front, as a matter of fact, I'll say this for Brad too, uh, my private equity partner who is starting this fund where we're buying these dealerships, also has another brand now and when we came in we said to him michael you know i don't know what you're doing with these 46 43 truck dealerships but you should call brad and within about i don't know what a day brad maybe we we switched that over because they were very very inefficient so look you need professional help it's less money than you think and oh my god it's less money than a breach yeah, the, the other, piece, other piece on that is a lot of times dealers focus, you know, all the stuff that we're talking about from an FTC standpoint is mostly cybersecurity. You build that on a foundation of IT support uh, and, you know, the reporting and whatnot that goes with it. But IT and cyber are very, very different things. They're different skill sets, uh, different requirements. Just because you have, you know, somebody in your store that does IT doesn't mean you have anybody that does cyber or that does FTC compliance. You know, they're there are levels of, of difference completely. So you just got to have to take a big picture approach to it. All right, uh, Brad, Proton Dealership IT does this. You do this for a lot of dealerships in all different sizes. How does our audience reach out to you at this time to learn more and take that next step? Uh, you can visit our website, uh, you know, hit, uh, there's a, a talk to an expert button there. Um, call the number, we're happy to talk to anybody. Uh, you know, and, and we provide we provide a bunch of free advice. Uh, that's that's kind of been our biggest thing, and that's how we've grown. Is we're always open for free advice. We'll chat with anybody, talk about anything, and give you the right direction. You know, if you wind up working with us, awesome. If you don't, we're still going to always give you good advice. Uh, it's just the right thing to do. And Nick Hill, I'll give you the I'll give you the last word. You know, in this particular uh, situation, these breach victims, it's almost like they choose themselves. It's not that the hacker chooses you. The hacker sprays out a bunch of emails and is waiting to see who will click. The victim can choose themselves. 
right? It's very important to have these pieces in place to control the situation, control your risks. It's the right thing to do, uh, and it's, it's good business. Yeah, it's the right thing, and it's good business. We'll leave it at that. Um, at the bottom of the screen, everybody, is uh, the Proton Dealership IT URL. Uh, you're welcome to visit that to learn more. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask, if you don't mind, to come back at our next event in January, and let's kind of take this up the next level and uh, let's learn how to defend our dealership from attacks uh, and uh, uh, see what we need to be doing there. Uh, and uh, we'll have a lot of this already taking place. So on behalf of the Fixed Ops Roundtable, I want to thank our panel today, uh, Brad Holton, Ed Roberts, uh, Dekel Kalani, and Todd Skelton. Uh, everybody, the, um, the panel here on safeguards at the Fixed Ops Roundtable Dare to Dream event. Thank you. Thank you.